you so much. We are going to uh, go into uh, some closing observations. I'm going to ask uh, Bob and Tony to come up, share with us uh, some of uh, their thoughts, and then we'll turn it over to Lou, who will uh, kind of put it back in the hands of our panel for some uh, summary observations. And we are shooting to get out of here by 11.30. I guess I'm first. You are first. Um, I, I, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Everybody, again, who is here, uh, this has been a remarkable morning. Uh, I, I think, again, we've put a lot of things on the table that are, that are happening in our educational system, but I think we also have to understand that our educational system is a part of a much broader system that's called our country and our economy. Um, and I think we need to keep that in mind. I was struck during Sophie's presentation that uh, one of the challenges we have is that, is that our kids appear to be perfectly willing to adapt to an inquiry-based model where we can all sit around the table and without animus and, and attacking each other can actually come to solutions. Mm -hmm. it strikes me that adults <laughs> are more challenged in that regard <laughs> these days. <laughs> So I, I think that's something that we need to that we need to think about is is you know and I said this at our last session but I, I think there are so many opportunities for improvement but you know we can't move forward in, in the best way possible if what we are accomplishing is small um, academies small this small that experimentation is necessary and wonderful part of what we're all about here is how do we scale up this thing and how do we make it applicable to everyone and make it successful so I think those those opportunities are out there for us we have to decide I think how we have to decide where we're going to go because you can't get there unless you decide where you're going to go um, but the opportunity to do that is there uh, the opportunity to improve the, the education of our of our kids to broaden the education. I, sitting there during Nancy's presentation going, I screwed my kids up. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I mean, you know, I started working when I was 10 that years old. That was not my intention. Yeah. <laughs> I have another opportunity with a three and a half year old. <laughs> you know, I started working when I was 10 years old. Most of us in this room did. And then what did we do when we had children? We didn't make them work. I didn't. Anyway, I wanted them to focus on their yeah, academics and all that stuff, and I didn't give them what you know. We need to, in some ways, we need to go back to the future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's both. Um, so again, thank you. I hope this has been a morning um, of a great amount of thought, a great realization that we have huge opportunities um, in, in front of us, and that we need to take advantage of that. And we need to make this happen. Thank you. Um, let me add my words of appreciation to um, what Bob has said. This has been a remarkable morning for me. It has so far exceeded my uh, expectation. And what I've learned from the presenters and from the engagement over here and over here has left me and my teammates here with lots of questions uh, and, and lots of ideas going forward. Um, uh, and one thing that occurred to me is I was listening to Pam Townsend, and she sort of whispers in my ear a lot about engineering, and I suddenly realized this morning that my grandfather was an engineer. He had the watch, he had the cap, and he <laughs> was on the railroad every morning as an engineer, so I can claim kinship with you <laughs> after all this time. Um, but so the, the metaphor that uh, Joanne threw out there was around the highway system, and I think what we're, I'm leaving this with, going back to our leadership, is talking about how do we deepen the ties to some of the key collaborators in this space across North Carolina, because it's not about what the new schools does, but it's about how we connect what we do with those who have expertise uh, and those who can really help us build that infrastructure that is seamless and aligned. And so uh, we heard from Susan about Keenan Fellows and the important work that they're doing with with externships there. We're now partnered with them on some strategies. Tom White is back there with NC State working with State in the provost's office around clarity on STEM strategies and alignment 
with STEM strategies. And, and uh, I see Bruce out here working with, with the University of Duke and the medical system there thinking about, again, how do we scale those experiences and create exemplars that can be moved across the state. And Joanne Honeycutt, the conversations that we've had about how do we begin to more thoughtfully engage with your work and your leadership. And so that's a big part of this discussion for us going forward. And that assumes that the relationship with the community college system and with our national partners here are very, very significant going forward. Uh, so we've already had conversations about working and partnering with the National Academy Foundation and the State Department of Public Instruction. And then Nancy Hoffman doesn't know it yet, but we're setting up a conference call to talk about how do we build off your model in North Carolina going forward. And so if you could pass that to me, please. So Nancy referenced her book. Um, I would strongly recommend, if you have a strong interest in this, spend some time with this. I did last weekend. It motivated and clarified some things for me that I just wish that I had understood quite some time ago. Nancy, it's quite an accomplishment. I should be very proud. Thank you. It's, it's readable. As <laughs> several of my friends said, I thought it would be really boring. <laughs> I, I do have to say, it does go better with red wine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let me again thank everyone. And we're looking to the chamber and how do we uh, align some of this work with the leadership of this chamber so it is a system. And we've got those collaborators that are connected people. I just want to let you know we're looking forward to continuing those conversations. So thank you very much. I think the uh, program here next is to ask uh, each of our panelists to maybe offer a few observations as we wrap up the day. And uh, if you've got a chance to talk at least, I'll start with you first. So you're the most, the most shy. Well, I, you know, I, I just think the, the discussion we're having is the, it is absolutely the right discussion. You know, because it really gets down to, um, for me, the foundational pieces of recognizing what we're trying to do for our kids, which is you know, develop them to be productive members of our society, our workforce, our economy over the long, uh, uh, you know, over the long haul. You know, everybody talks about what the American dream is, but really what it is is to be able to take care of yourself and take care of your family and have the skills uh, and the knowledge and the capabilities to be able to do that. So linking up our educational system, our businesses, uh, doing it structurally, uh, doing it in a way that, that uh, nobody's left behind uh, in it, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't use that terminology, but simply, you know, from a standpoint that all these kids are capable of doing this. Every single one of them. It is a matter of providing opportunity uh, for the kids, no matter where they are, no matter what community they're in, um, to be able to do that. And the kids will lift themselves up when they have that opportunity. So I, I just think it's a great conversation. I think we got a lot of work to do, Bob, you know, from a new schools project. Uh, board standpoint, we've got a lot of work to do, um, but this is the this is the right stuff. And just an amazing day, great time, great time. Yeah, I would agree with Jeff. I, th I think um, it was just a lot more information than I expected, and, and really um, the models of success, and what's working, what we can do. Times this morning, I felt like maybe we were sitting in church and just wanted to <laughs> yell out, "Amen." <laughs> <laughs> number of times, but um, I would say we need some folks down on West Jones Street that will be in session here in a couple months to say amen to, to some of this because I think it is a monumental challenge for us to uh, fight through some of the uh, old culture that Andrea mentioned to implement some of these initiatives and I think it will take uh, a lot of private sector driven uh, approach here. And uh, it will take very strong public-private partnerships. I think that's the way of the future. That's the way to get it done. And uh, and I think that's the new school project has done a very good job in laying the uh, foundation for that. So I'm excited about it. Thanks. Yeah. And I just echo the amens. I think that conversation was just right on target and on point. And um, I guess Nancy, in her discussion of Switzerland, um, help me to conclude you know, where we really need to focus, what are the new two, next two steps. And she talked about this infrastructure of support for industry, industry participation. How do we really together with the chamber, with all, all sectors, come to the table 
and, and provide this industry infrastructure, this, this solid infrastructure. And then she also mentioned, and something that I've been struggling with, um, and others, um, as an engineer, kind of looking at the education system in the state of North Carolina, is we do have some wonderful um, choices out there for project-based learning, and uh, she called, called it from random, random set of choices, but they aren't systemic, and how do you start, how do you connect the dots? And, and I don't have those answers, but how do we connect these dots in order to scale all this up? And I think those are the, those are the two challenges that I see. Well, thanks a lot. I think we've had a, a great panel and a great discussion today. I mean, I, I think I would start the day the way, uh, or ended the way I started it. Uh, I think the business community is in 100% agreement that we need you, Tony, to succeed. Uh, I think uh, certainly what you're doing here with your vision in 2015 it is probably a model that others will pay attention to, but uh, I, I like the way you all have approached your work. Uh, some of us had a chance to hear uh, Nita Levine speak uh, at our annual meeting a few weeks ago, and, and one of Nita's rules, as you might know, is a very successful president of a private university is he has a no whining rule. <laughs> and uh, what I like about your approach is there's not a whole lot of whining associated with this approach. I think you're busy looking on a path that will be a strategy and vision for our state. Uh, and I think we've had a lot of discussion today about tactics. I think one of the things I would challenge you to put us to the best use, uh, and maybe I'd use Jeff's company as an example. I, I would bet that you know Jeff and, and Bill Johnson and others want to bring us in to help us figure out how to make his nuclear plant uh, a Sharon Harris run more efficiently. Uh, that, that may not be our best use either. Uh, so I think as, as we help you through this strategy uh, figure out the what, uh, we're going to need your team uh, to put the gloves on and figure out the how. Uh, as I've been in the state a number of years, uh, there, there's a lot of questions, and I think questions sometimes are like an old pair of shoes. They just become very comfortable. You know, what about this drop you know, What about career versus STEM? You know, what I like about your approach is you're asking different questions. And, and that's how you scale up. That, that's how you get to a different place. Because it, if you bring us all into this big at the table discussion where we're asking the same questions, uh, you don't get to vision 2015. You might not get to vision 2013. Uh, so we're certainly encouraged. In fact, uh, uh, Thomas Edison, I think, has a great quote here that might fit the task. Uh, most people usually avoid tough problems because it shows up in coveralls. It looks like hard work. <laughs> uh, we've got coveralls for everybody, <laughs> and it's hard work, uh, but I, I would suggest to you that uh, probably less time spent figuring out uh, how can business help us solve this problem, why is education doing a better job, uh, time would be better spent figuring out what's the vision, and it's not just 2015, but what, what's the vision 2030, what's North Carolina's economy going to look like, and how we can get there. Uh, that, that's when I think we're doing our highest and best work. Uh, most successful business plans uh, start with a focus on the customer. You're doing the same thing. And in this case, uh, I think ultimately, a student-centered approach that moves at the speed of business uh, will serve us all well. Uh, so we're excited about the energy in this room today uh, and really excited about the work that you're doing for North Carolina. Uh, whether it's the American dream, homeland security, opportunity, uh, changing behavior and culture. Uh, if, if this work was easy, uh, anybody could do it and it'd be done. Uh, but I think you've recognized it, it's tough work. Uh, we need the coveralls on. We're ready to help you, and you know that. Uh, but I think, you know, put us to best use as a business community. Uh, we can help you with the vision, but when it comes to the how, uh, it's easy for me to see as I travel the state, we know how to fix this problem. We have the expertise. I think the opportunity to align that is real. Uh, and in fact, just like in a company setting when times are tough, and it certainly is right now, people figure out how to get things done. They figure out how to work together. Uh, if I had a dollar for every time I heard a duplicate program in the state going on and you wonder why these people don't work together, uh, we got dozens of people doing the same thing in the same space all the time. Uh, we have an opportunity to create a real synergy, and we'd like to help you do that. Uh, so I know we have a lot, a lot of takeaways from this session. 
I certainly learned a lot too. I didn't know what pedagogy was either. Um, I, I, and I'm not an education expert, as you know. But I, I think, uh, in addition to talking about scale up, I think we should be talking about uh, really getting on with the business at hand because. Uh, maybe a good visual to think about it is if, if you all get both hands firmly on the wheel, we'll help you with the accelerator. So thank you very much. Okay, I think I'm last, right? Okay, let's wrap it on up. My favorite quote is, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And if you substitute that with our children, what we have been about today is caring about our children. Everything, and I call them the little hands. We care about the hands. It is so wonderful to be in a state that cares so much about our children and to be a part of an organization, the North Carolina New Schools Project, where we are all about our hands. You know, we talk about our kids being at risk, and I always say they are at risk. They are at risk of greatness. They are at risk of being our doctors, our lawyers, our engineers, our plumbers. We just have to invest in them. And that's what this strategic planning work is about, this workforce development strategy session is about, investing in our young people. Now in about two hours, I'm going to spend the afternoon with some high schoolers. Because actually today is a day across all of at and that we are celebrating our job shadowing program. And so all across at and we have uh, high schoolers uh, in, our, um, in our work buildings today. This session today has put in context for me what that is really all about. We talk about what, we talk about how, but sometimes you need to focus on why. And so this afternoon when I look at those studies, I'm going to know why I actually spent the morning here and what this is really all about. And it's about our children and investing in them. As a business leader, I have so many takeaways. I talked a lot in our company about what I call the summer silence. And Andrea Harris and I talked about this. We talk about it every summer when she brings young people into my office to sit down uh, just so we can visit, so they can see somebody different. And frankly, so they can see somebody who looks like them. And I always feel wonderful when she leaves, but then I feel bad that we really don't have an internship program because of all of the policies and the issues and Lou and I have talked about that. We've got to figure that out. We've got to figure out how to bring some noise to what I have called for years the summer silence. We just kind of go dark, and that's when our, some of our kids need us the most. So I have taken that, I am taking that away personally to work with Lou, to work with Caroline and others to figure out how we break that summer silence so that we can bring some of the young people into our workplaces. I know Jeff is, is, is on top of that as well. So thank you for being here. This has been a fabulous morning. I want to give another round of applause. Show some North Carolina love to all of our presenters. Thank you for being here. Tony, know you can count on us to do whatever you need us to do. Uh, we are here for you. Everybody, turn your phones back on. That's how I make my money. That's how my kids eat. Thank you for coming.